you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz, and I'm here today with... Zero. Zero. How you doing this week? A little glad and a little afraid. Uh-oh. Uh, project that I am working on comes out soon, and I do not know what the reception's going to be like. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Is this your first project? It'll be the third project that I will actually have an official credit on. Nice. All right, man. Congratulations. Look forward to see how that goes for you. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, Zero. So we are here today to review the 1996 horror mystery teen drama, The Craft, starring Robin Turi, Faruska Bulk, Nev Campbell, Rachel True, and Skeet Ulrich, directed by Andrew Fleming. Zero, I think it's kind of clear that we're not the age group for this. No, this one is no. so cliche. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just let it go. Go ahead. <laughs> starts off with the main character sarah she and her family move to a brand new house that they bought in los angeles and she's kind of sh trying to go about her day and at the same time there are these three outcast girls that are trying to find the fourth person to be in their little coven or whatever and then they notice sarah and then it just kind of goes off from there and yeah it's just so cliche because like you can just read everything just happening it's so telegraphed Yes, absolutely. It's actually a cliche of a bunch of different films. There is the high school outcast film where you have the new girl who hooks up with the outcasts and kind of finds herself in a way. But it's also like a you get a little bit of power and then you go crazy with that power. I absolutely 100% agree with you. There is really not an original thing about this movie that hasn't been done before in other movies or other stories or God knows what else. But you would hope that maybe the personalities of the characters or the actresses who are playing these characters would actually elevate this up to another level. And for the most part, that does not happen. I would say with the exception of Farusa Bulk, I don't think anybody has a personality at all. Like, at all. When they flip into being power mad, it goes like on a dime. It's like one minute they're like, oh no, like what is all these weird things happening? This is so cool. And then boom, they're crazy. Like, whoa, okay, that kind of happened all of a sudden. What about you with the performances of the actresses in this movie or the actors? It was just kind of, eh. I think it's just the fact that just the movie is just so cliche. Everything is telegraphed. You're just like, oh shit, it's going down. Oh, called it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think honestly, and not that I have watched these movies recently, but from what I remember, like when I was in school, this could have easily been a Nickelodeon or a Disney Channel film, with the exception of like the really dark and violent elements of the film. Let's talk about something in this film that they'll never do now, which is is that they highlight teenage suicide in this movie, like when they show that the girl like slit her wrist. Oh, you did it the right way. I'm like. Whoa. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> whoa, that's a little... <laughs> I forgot they did that. It's like, okay. There are interesting elements like that in this movie. But I'm with you. None of this was interesting to me. Like I said, I think Bulk is like the only thing about this film that I actually liked because she kind of just chews scenery throughout the entire movie. The rest were like as bland as cardboard especially the main character which is robin tony who uh, plays sarah in this she just has like no charisma at all in this movie and Neve campbell's the same way too and she's actually decent a anything that you liked about this movie <laughs> not really <laughs> okay mostly just because everything just seems so telegraphed yeah and truth be told i had not watched this movie i remember the commercials for it. i was like oh, this looks so corny <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, I agree with you. I was the same way, but only because I really wasn't a horror fan either. So I was like, yeah, I have zero interest in this movie whatsoever. But I would have, like, people who are, like, into Halloween, like, into the scary stuff, witches, stuff like that, would say, oh, that's a cool movie. I would rather watch, like, Practical Magic 20 times than watch this again. I don't think it's, like, awful. I'm with you. It's just so stereotypical. It is, it is so formulaic and by the numbers that the only thing that's shocking about it is just stuff that was allowed to be used in the 90s. And that is it. This is kind of like an interesting glimpse as to what they would allow teen movies to have in the 90s. And that is about it. And to remind myself that Faruska Balk was actually decent as an actress. That was it for me on this one. Apparently, they had originally planned for a sequel that was going to be straight to DVD. Mm -hmm. And then they just nixed it. They were just like, nope. <laughs> Which was kind of surprising because this movie actually did decently in the box office. And this was also around a time where R-rated movies, especially geared towards teens, did not make a lot of money. 
it didn't make gangbusters. I think it made twenty five million of its fifteen million dollar budget. But considering what the movie was and how much it cost to probably make this film, that's not bad. So that's actually good in that end. So I'm actually surprised they didn't go forward with it but it gets crazier when i was researching this apparently it's been kind of back and forth because in may 2016 sony pictures announced that they were going to make a sequel then apparently that announcement just caused everyone who loved the original to just say oh uh-uh, no this is going to be a fucking shit show once again project barry and then apparently in march 2019 project was then uh, taken over by Jason Blumhouse and his Blumhouse Productions company. This is where it gets just completely insane. You had Zoe Lister-Jones signing on to write the script, Daniel Casey um, uh, to do production uh, as the screenwriter, Kaylee Spaney as one of the leads, and then David Duchovny was cast as an <laughs> undisclosed male role. <laughs> yeah. In 2020, Sony released a trailer that announced instead of uh, being released to the theaters that it would be put via a on-demand streaming thing in October 28th of 2020. <laughs> what a fucking wild ride for, for the sequel. <laughs> Alright, Zero, so let's rip off the band-aid. So overall, what did you think of the craft? God, it is terrible. Oh, wow. If you're into kind of campy teen movies, yeah, sure. You might have fun with this, but if you're looking for something that's got substance, this ain't it. The horror element is so telegraphed that there's no suspense. It's just kind of a, uh, something bad's going to happen. Oh, shit, something bad happened. Okay, well, all right, no suspense there. Let's keep on going. It almost comes off more like a teenage TV show than a movie to me. Yeah. Uh, Mostly because of just kind of like the day-to-day happenings that they go through in high school and stuff. Maybe it would have been better if it was kind of adapted into a TV show or something. I don't know. As a movie, I just did not enjoy it it was like nails on a chalkboard for me oh it was that bad huh yeah <laughs> okay okay i don't think it's as bad as you think it is but i do think that it's kind of generic and bad so i'm not going to recommend it as well i think if you're nostalgic for this type of movie like in the 90s these type of teen movies then i can see why you would enjoy it in that aspect but i'm with you there are too many elements of this film that are just way too telegraphed and way too familiar for it to be interesting the only thing i got out of this i liked was actually Farusa bulk as nancy in this film so overall zero do you recommend the craft no i don't recommend it just (laughs) it's just so so bad (laughs) tell us how you really feel and i also do not recommend the craft but then again we're not teenage girls so (laughs) we're not the audience (laughs) Oh, man. Check it out on Peacock or MGM Plus if you want to watch it. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. All right, so that's the end of this review. On Saturday, I'll be reviewing the reboot of Star Trek from 2009. Tuesday, I'll be reviewing 13 Days and Thursday Zero, what are we watching next? The 1962 film, The Manchurian Candidate. That's right. The Manchurian Candidate, directed by John Frankenheimer. This is weird. I think this is one of these films where I have seen the remake first, and I have not seen the original. But it's not because, like, oh, well, you know, I just prefer to see the remakes. No, it's like I just never got around to it. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to this one. I've heard great things about it, and I actually like the remake. I know it's sacrilegious to some people, but I thought the remake was pretty damn good. So hopefully this will be as good. What have you heard about this? All I just know is that it is a beloved classic. And it's just a political thriller. All right, then. So on Saturday, I'll be reviewing Star Trek, the reboot from 2009. On Tuesday, I'll be watching and reviewing 13 Days. And on Thursday, me and Zero are reviewing The Manchurian Candidate. I am The Wiz. And I'm Zero. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.